Book Five These Dark Shores. Stand aside, Charon. I claim this boat in the name of my sister, Medusa, who wails in torment within Tartarus. Only the dead. <laughs> so, Hades' undead pet will not yield to me. I say again, stand aside. So be it. It matters not. These black waters shall carry my vengeance hence. I shall return, boatman, with the hosts of the dead in my wake. <sighs> Made of obsidian, this stone is not only smooth, but warm to the touch. The emaciated man, if one such as Charon can be called a man, is draped in tattered robes. His skeletal hand is wrapped about an intricately carved rowing oar. This long skiff is comprised of bleached bone and absent of any adornment. Argonus contemplates boarding the skiff, but then remembers that the ferryman to the underworld requires a payment for passage. Recalling the stories of Charon and the river of Acheron, Argonus embraces his plight and offers a coin for passage. The ferryman does not move, nor does he speak. Yet, Argonus can hear a raspy voice whisper in his head. Only the dead. Argonus puts his weight against the wood. As the lever moves, the A few moments after the stone touches the light, the world around Argonus begins to swim. Thank you. 
As soon as Argonus moves the stone to the temple, the room falters and everything goes dim. A sigh escapes Argonus's lips as he uses the power of the diamond on the statue that was once his shipmate. Once the stone is held within the light, the world around Argonus wavers. As soon as Argonus moves the stone to the temple, the room falters and everything goes dim. The sailor of the Argo reaches into his satchel, removes a silver coin and presents it to the ferryman. Charon gazes upon it for a moment, then simply shakes his head. Before Argonus can offer protest, distant sounds rise from the river, whispers echoing off wet stone within the damp cavern. Within moments, new voices join the others, creating a disquieting chorus of shouts and cheers. Join us, Argonus! Join us, Argonus! Hail the son of Argus! Argonus! He has freed us! Argonus weeps at the words of tribute as the souls of slain Argonauts rise from the shadows, appearing before Charon, beseeching, entreating, almost as one voice. Hail the son of Argus! As the eyes of Charon move slowly from the spirits to the astonished sailor, Argonus's hand shifts once again, showing that within it, he holds the power of life and death. Charon gazes at the gift from Thanatos, and after what seems to Argonus an eternity, the ferryman relents, motioning the Argonaut to board. As he steps onto the skiff and Charon sets his oar to black waters, a sobering thought enters Argonus's mind. At first, 
It is a small speck, but it grows even as the sailor's eyes widen in understanding. Athena did not lie. She fulfilled her promise. She granted him a boat from this isle, but not the one he imagined. No, not this one. Grasping this great deception, a wave of anger crashes over Argonus, nearly drowning him in its fury. He who had supped, fought, and bled beside hero Jason. He who had sailed seas no man had set or within. He had been played the fool. But even as this vile thought seeks to overcome him, to bring him to his knees, another appears. It is different from the last and whispers something new into Argonus's ear. Something far more powerful. Perhaps he had washed up onto these shores, a sailor, a historian, a map maker, and yes, the puppet of a goddess. Perhaps this was so. But has he not now become so much more? A hero in his own right, with a story yet to complete. Argonus, the rider of Pegasus, liberator of souls, bane of harpies, forger of light, sets his jaw, knowing that Sthenos' retribution must come to an end. And as he stares out beyond the Black River, tendrils of darkness surround the boat, and the underworld claims him as its own. What is that? The siren song? But how? Argus. No. No! No! Now bend your ear one last time to Calliope lover of Ares, and a muse of much renown. The story of Argonus and the gods of stone has been told in epic verse. And like the namesaked sailor, I too must depart from this isle, putting aside quill and parchment. Argonus and his journey into the underworld continues. But for you and I, the curtain has been drawn. And our role in this grand play is at an end.